What's up guys, it's Cody here. Today in this video, we're gonna be talking about jailbreak tweaks, all for iOS 12.4 and they're all absolutely free. So for the most part, these are very small tweaks that just kind of get rid of small annoyances or possibly add a little feature here and there that makes things a little bit nicer. And I really like these types of tweaks just because they're made for one specific reason and there's not a lot of things that can break inside of them. And the other reason that I like them is because they're all free. Who doesn't like free tweaks? But before we get into the tweaks, I wanted to tell you that I am giving away AirPods. So in my previous video about the AirPods Pro, if you guys want a free pair of AirPods, you wanna enter that giveaway, make sure to click on that link and then follow the instructions inside of that video. Also, if you're not jailbroken and you're watching this just for fun, you might wanna check out the iOS 13 Siri shortcuts video that I just posted as well. In fact, if you guys wanna go check that out and you wanna like the video, leave a comment, I will actually give you a second entry into the AirPods giveaway. So if you like the video and leave a comment in that video as well, I'll take those comments into consideration when I'm choosing the winner. So I'll leave links to both of those videos in the description, but enough talking, let's get into these tweaks. First tweak I wanna to talk to you guys about is called 13 HUD. And what this does is give you that iOS 13 volume HUD because the HUD in iOS 12 still sucks, but you can see right here, very simply, you hit the volume up button, and if you hit it twice, it's gonna shrink down into that smaller scale. But when we first initiate it, you can see it's a big volume HUD right there. Next up, we have a tweet called battery folder title. So this is gonna be helpful if you use a lot of folders and you like to hide your battery and you wanna know what your battery percentage is. So if you basically open up a folder, you can have the battery percentage as the title of that folder. And you can actually change the color of the text. You can change the size of the text. But if you spend a lot of time inside of folders and you're going through pages inside your folders, you can still see how much battery you have left because in the background, it's blurred out in the status bar. Next up is battery home bar. And what this one does is if you have that bar down at the bottom of your iPhone 10, then you will see it's actually going to replace that home bar with a battery indicator. So it's gonna put your battery percent level right there. So you can see it's 57% and you can see it's roughly 57% right there. And the lower that it goes, it gets to a yellow and then it goes red depending on how low the battery is. So just a cool little tweak that tracks your battery inside your home bar. Next up is Blank Pass. And you can see exactly what it does right here. It takes away all the text inside of your passcode keys and just leaves it completely blank. So this is really good when you're theming your entire device, maybe for a perfect jailbroken setup video and you want to minimize what that uh, screen looks like. So maybe you're taking away the text up here. If you're just looking for a completely different look, this is a cool one to give a try. Next up, we have a tweak called Blurry Paper. And I love this tweak. I think it's really good because in actuality, this wallpaper in the background is pretty low quality, but the blurry paper makes it look really nice. Not to mention, you guys, if you've seen my uh, previous jailbroken setups, my perfect jailbroken setup videos, you know that I like a nice, clean home screen. So I'll put designs and cool stuff in the background of my uh, lock screen, but for my home screen, I like it to be clean because I just want the icons to be what pops out and I don't want a lot of noise in the background. So I really like the blurred out background that we have here for blurry paper. And it's really simple to set up. I'll go into the uh, settings here. So if we open this up, you can basically just change uh, the blur style. So you can do a normal light or dark. So you can change if you want it lighter or darker. And you can see, you can turn this on the home screen and the lock screen or just one or the other. So in my opinion, I would probably, if I was setting this up for a perfect jailbroken setup video, I would turn off the lock screen and then put something pretty cool there, but I would definitely leave it for the home screen. Now, if you guys want this wallpaper, you guys are gonna complain that it is low quality, but if you have blurry paper, it's gonna look really nice but I will link it in the description below. Next up, we have a tweet called Carabiner. Now this is a pretty cool one, I like it a lot, um, but it is a little bit buggy, so keep that in mind if you do end up downloading this and try it out. But what it does is it adds this widget right up here at the top and it lowers all your icons so it looks pretty nice. You have just the uh, temperature right here, the time of day, so it's nighttime, it's actually one in the morning, and then you have the date right there underneath it. So what this does is it brings together your home screen and your lock screen into one screen. So you're probably thinking, well, where do I get my notifications from? Well, you can actually just swipe up. If I could swipe up, 
there we go. And then you have your notifications right here. And I kind of wish that they would hide the dock when you initiated the notification center right here, but you can just scroll through just like that and go through all your notifications. But you can see that it is a little bit buggy. So when you want to go back to your home screen, you want to actually swipe down at the bottom. So if we pull up the notification center again, you wanna swipe down here and it'll work fine. But if you do it up from the top, it's actually going to initiate the uh, spotlight search. So if you swipe down, you can see that it pulls up spotlight. So with this tweak, you kind of have to give it a little TLC uh, to make sure that it works. You will get some weird issues sometimes if you swipe over. Doesn't seem like it's doing it right now, but swiping up, make sure you're swiping down below those icons that way you won't initiate spotlight next up you probably saw it earlier but it's called cc color and what this does is allow you to change the color of your control center so if we just swipe down from the top you can see i have a purple control center right here and you can change this to whatever color that you want to so it's really simple if you just go into your settings go to cc color so you can type in the hex code if you want to or you can just use the sliders that i've done right here so we'll just make it a little bit darker and then go back I don't, th I think it still works if you don't respring. No, it doesn't. Okay, so let's respring just to show you that it does work. And then if we swipe down again, you can see that the purple got a little bit darker. So a cool and simple little tweak. The next tweak is Deja Vu 2. Now this is a helpful one if you guys use Apple Music and you like to make a lot of playlists. So what this does is if you open up your Apple Music and let's just say that you go to a playlist you can see that I have just a test playlist because I don't use Apple Music and I feel like I have to defend my music uh, in my Apple Music all the time because I downloaded all these songs from like the Starbucks app when they gave them out for free. So I have a Taylor Swift song in here. Not to, I mean, I still like Taylor Swift. She's pretty dope. But what this tweet does is let's say that I wanted to add a song to a specific playlist. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tap on an album and let's say I wanted to add this song to my playlist. Well, I actually already have this song in the only playlist that I have. So what it does is keep you from adding duplicates to your playlist on accident. So let's say you have a playlist that has 100 songs on it and you don't know if this song is in it. Well, it actually grays out the playlists that you have that song already on. So it's gonna help keep you from adding duplicates to a specific playlist. Now, if you want to add a duplicate, you can still just tap on it and it's going to add it, but it is going to gray it out to show you that it's already in there. Next is edit 3D. So if you hate trying to get your device or your icons in wiggle mode, well, this is going to allow you to use 3D press to rearrange your apps. So you just 3D press on any application. It's gonna give you that option to rearrange apps. It's gonna put your device into wiggle mode so you can rearrange everything on your home screen. Next up, we have haptic lock. Now what this does is give you haptic feedback every time you lock or unlock your device. It is customizable to an extent and it's kind of hard to show, but maybe you'll hear it vibrate. Let me see. You can kind of hear it when it unlocked it. It kind of vibrated twice but you can definitely feel it, it definitely works. So if you go into your settings here and we go down to haptic lock, you can see the all you have to do is enable it and then come down here, you can select if you want it to give haptic feedback once, twice, or thrice every time that you unlock or lock your device. So you would just have to toggle that on, apply the changes which will respring and then that'll take effect. Next up is no typing indicator 12. And what this does is get rid of the ellipses every time that you're typing to someone. So the recipient is not going to see the ellipses while you're typing. So sometimes when you're typing, you want to think for a minute and somebody's sitting there waiting for you to respond and they just see the ellipses popping up, going away, popping up, going away. Well, this is going to keep that from happening. You can just hide your ellipses at all times. Next up is a tweak called no 3D lines. So you probably saw this earlier when I was showing you the rearrange apps. Uh, tweak, but what this does is get rid of all the lines in your app 3D menus. So normally you'd have lines in between each. With this tweak, it makes it look a whole lot cleaner and you get rid of those lines. Next up is no D&D banner. And this is a tweak that if you like to have do not disturb enabled on your device a lot, which I do, then you probably just don't want that banner notification on your notification center all the time. So you can see right here, I have the banner on my iOS 13 device and you can see that I am in Do Not Disturb. And if we go into our notification center, we're not going to see that banner. So it basically just gets rid of that completely so it's not taking up space on your lock screen or your notification center. 
And the next one is called Peekable. And since this is an iPhone 10, I can't really showcase what this tweak does because what Peekable does is give you the ability to use peek and pop on non 3D touch devices. So this obviously is a 3D touch device and I don't have one that's not 3D touch jailbroken right now. And it would be kind of a, a lot of work in order to get one just to show you the peek and pop. But basically what it does is allow you to peek and pop images or anything else that peeks and pops. So that's a peek and that's a pop. And you can use that on non 3D touch devices. So definitely worth checking out if you want that feature. Next up is a tweak called PyCrust, and this is probably one that's gonna be helpful for people that have slower internet connections, just because it's gonna give you a progress indicator on apps that are downloading, especially for larger, maybe iOS game downloads. You can see the progress on it, so you know that it is moving, it's not frozen in place, which I've ran into several times before. So it's a good way to keep track of applications that should be downloading, and you wanna make sure that they're downloading. So if we just download a game like Pokemon Masters here, we'll tap on Get, and now once it starts downloading, we will go to our home screen here and you can see the percentage right there. So it is customizable a little bit. You can basically add the percentage inside the app or you can use it down for the uh, label. I just put it on both so I could show you how it works. So this is just showing you the percentage that it's downloading to make sure that you are getting progress done and you can actually put a pie chart in the background if you want to like you would normally see when you download an app. So that's all configurable inside of the settings here. If you go into pie crust right here, so you have a few options that you can toggle on. So just enable it. You can show it inside the app and then you have your app options. So you can replace the pie chart with the percentage, which I did. You can use white text or hide the percentage sign. And then right down here, you can use it on the app label. So pretty cool, but also a very small tweak. Next up is a tweak called See Through Light. Now this is a cool tweak. This is the light version or the free version. There is a paid version of the tweak. I'm not actually sure what the paid version gives you uh, in terms of features, but what this tweak does is it gives you a see-through lock screen showing us the home screen in the background right there. It would actually look better if I didn't have the clock right here just because I already have a clock up there. But I think this looks pretty cool. Now the only thing I would change about this is the unlock animation. That would be a cool little feature to add because what happens here is it still unlocks like normal. So it just kind of slides up and all the icons fall into place. But what would be cool is if that transparent layer of the lock screen just kind of slid up and the entire home screen was already here. It would just be a smoother transition. I think it would look pretty cool. Next up, we have a tweak called slide to view notification. So by default, when you slide a notification to the right, you can see that it tries to open up that notification. Now, instead of doing that with slide to view notification, it's going to allow you to view the notification rather than opening up the application itself. So you just slide over and then it gives you a preview of what that notification is. Next up, we have another haptic feedback tweak called Spotaptic. And what this tweak does is give you haptic feedback inside of all of your Spotify apps. So if we go into settings here, you can see that we have a ton of options here for the play button, previous, next, repeat, shuffle, cue, heart, slider, song, and device available button. All is going to give a light haptic feedback. If you tap on one of these, you can see you have a few different options. So you have the canceled, try again, failed. So these are just the ones that you would normally get when you're trying to unlock your device and you fail. You have the pop, peak, heavy, medium, and light. So you can set these up however you'd want to. I'll just set that one up for the play button. So if we go into Spotify, let's see if you can actually hear it. I'll actually turn the volume all the way down and see if we can hear something. Yeah, it's probably impossible to hear on my mic, but it does vibrate and it seems to work pretty well. Next up, we have a tweet called the did that say or TF did that say. And this is going to be really helpful for those of you that are huge on Reddit, that use Reddit a lot and you use the Reddit app. So what this does is allow you to retrieve deleted comments. And I find this very helpful. I hate it when I'm reading through comments on Reddit and there's like a top comment and it's been deleted and it's got like 30,000 upvotes, maybe not 30,000, but a lot of upvotes. And you're just wondering what the heck did it say? So what this does is allow you to see what those comments say. So you can see right here, I'm in the Diablo subreddit. I don't know about you guys, but I'm like really stoked about Diablo 4. There's some things that they need to change, but I'm, I'm a huge Diablo nerd. 
you guys probably didn't know that about me. But for the most part, we have a deleted comment right up here at the very top. So what do we wanna do? We wanna tap on the ellipses right here, and then we have the tweak, the TF did that say, we're gonna tap on it, and guess what? It's gonna grab that comment and put it right back where it was. I love this tweak. This is probably one of the most helpful tweaks that I found in this entire list because it's come in handy several times. Next up, we have a tweak called X Switcher or 10 Switcher. I'm not sure exactly how you pronounce this one, but it's another very simple tweak. But what you would do is go into your app switcher here. You would just swipe down on any app card and it's gonna give you some options right here. So you can kill all the applications, you can respring your device or reboot it. So if you don't have a tweak where you can quickly respring your device, this one might be a good one for you if this is the way you wanna access it. I feel like you should always have a tweak that allows you to respring your device willingly and easily whenever you need to. And the reboot and the kill all applications is just a plus. Next up, we have a tweak called Storage 3D. This is another 3D press one that you would do right onto your settings. And what it does is tell you exactly how much free storage you have at the top of that 3D menu. So you can see I have 240 gigs left on this device. So it's just another really easy way to check your free storage right from the home screen. Next up, we have a lock screen widget called Simple LS2. So if you're looking for a different look on your lock screen, you can check this one out. Again, this one's free. So you have your date, your day, your date, and then you have just the nighttime little emblem right there, the location, the degrees, and the weather. So clear, rainy, all that good stuff. So I think it's just a nice, clean look for the lock screen. You could probably make it look even cooler with a different lock screen uh, wallpaper than what I have right here, but not a bad look. Now, if you're looking for not as much of a drastic change, you can use a tweak called Epoch. So what this is going to do is allow you to change the font of your uh, clock right here and the date right there on the lock screen. So if we go ahead and go into the Epoch settings right here, you can see that it is enabled. You can set this to the default font size, bold or italic and then just respring in order to make those changes. So let's just actually do the bold. So you can see here now it's bolded and I think it just looks a whole lot better because it's smaller and the font just looks better. It looks like it fits on the lock screen a little bit better. So just by comparison right there, you can see it's just a larger font. Of course, this is a larger screen, so it's gonna be a little bit bigger anyways, but I just think the font looks a little bit better on Epoch. Next up, we have a tweet called Always Latest Timeline Twitter. So if you guys don't know on Twitter, you can sort by home, which basically shows you your top posts at the very top, or you can set it by latest tweets. So if you tap right here, you can tap on to go home. And then if you tap here again, if you try to set it back to the latest tweets, it tells you you'll be switched back to home after you've been away for a while. So what this tweet does is it doesn't ever go back home. It always stays on latest tweets. That way you always have a timeline that is in order. So a nice tweak if you want your timeline on Twitter to be in chronological order. And last but not least, we have a tweet called CC Calc. This is a simple one, but it is a nice one. So here in your control center, if you 3D press on your calculator, you're actually going to get a nice little calculator that you can quickly access rather than searching for and opening up the actual calculator app. So just to make sure that it works, we'll just do a quick division problem here. And it works just fine. All right, guys, that's all I got for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you hit that like button. Of course, if you guys want to be entered in that AirPods giveaway, the links to both of those videos are in the description. So just check those out if you're interested in winning some AirPods. And of course, if you guys want to stay up to date with everything Apple, everything Jailbreak, or any other tech that I want to cover, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on those bell notifications, and I will see you guys in the next video.